So how many times do you think that that machine will open up that Ford F-150's four doors? The answer, 84,000 times as part of Ford's durability testing. And that whole process takes about eight weeks. And to make it even harder, it's cold in there, it's freezing. And durability testing of Ford F-150's is coming up next on the Fast Lane Truck. take the actual measurement on the seat and then that's what the robot's simulating. So each one's a little different, there's no standard. And yeah, we do try to get the different weights and the different people coming in and it, it measures the pressure on the seats and then that's what we're simulating with the robot. How many times do you do it? Uh, I think it's about 50,000. 50,000 times. Yeah. How it, long will that take? It takes, uh, it really depends on the seat because yeah. of the load pass. So um, I'm going to say the average is 10 days. And do you differentiate between a truck and a car? What we do is put the seat in the actual vehicle yep. and people get in and out. So if the opening's a little different, if um, the different heights of the vehicle, we have to measure it each and every time. And does this robot simulate for that? Does it make yes. up for that? Yeah. Yes. Every, every time we set this up, we have to adjust every so that time. that looks like it's for a car, not a truck. Yeah, that would assume that's correct. Yeah. So. And do you, uh, do you put different materials on the robot that simulate different types of... Uh, we, ten, we tend to use the one material that is a, a duck cloth that's very similar to uh, uh, like a jeans material. I see. So, and, but that's, that's the only one we use. And what do you do with the data afterwards? So 50,000 times and then what happens? There's an evaluation of the seat material and comfort. People come out. There's a set of people that look at it. And they evaluate how much is left in the seat and yep. how much wear is on the... Yep. Now, back in 1989, Ford started testing their pickups, in this case a Raptor, using the simulators. Today they still use this. This will represent the full amount of testing that's done at the proving grounds for durability. Right, but so 50 hours you said? I, I, I thought he said. It, it really depends on how each vehicle's tuned, but right. Alex, what's the average? Takes five days. Five days. Five days. Yeah. In the past, Ford would run their pickups on rough courses like this one to test the truck's durability. And of course, at the same time, they would mount the pickup on a machine just like this one that could compress a lifetime of wear and tear into just 50 hours. But today, they do something even more extraordinary. They use robotic drivers that can drive, well, almost 24-7. Uh, we've run, uh, some of our vehicles, we've achieved 22 hours of runtime in one day, and that's on the events. So, uh, and then uh, the vehicle that that was on was one, um, a couple of the roads we've said are uh, so severe we don't allow the drivers to go on them anymore. So these are, these are more representative of what a truck would do. And it would do that for, say, you, you mentioned up to 20 to 22 hours a day on bumps like that. So. Uh, Obviously, it's quite severe for people, and that's why we've targeted those types of roads for uh, robotic testing. All right, now it's loud and it's cold in here. In fact, it's freezing in here, and that's on purpose because Ford does durability testing of the F-150, closing and opening the door 84,000 times in about eight weeks to simulate about 10 years of use. As you can tell, automation plays a huge part in the building of a Ford F-150. In fact, Ford is best known for applying the assembly line to building automobiles. And that happened right here. Now, I bet you knew that, but did you know that here they build over a thousand F-150s a day? And it takes about 10 hours to build one pickup. 
the, the opera or the integration of automation within the facility yeah. and is what it takes to build a truck. So you have a lot of automation as far as specifically around our welding uh, fixtures and stuff like that. Um, and, and a lot of the airproofing type systems, installation type systems, which are automated. Um, we use a pallet system here at the Dearborn Truck System, which is more like a scissor lift that allows that vehicle to get more to our, towards the ergonomic level than it needs to be so, uh, to get in and out of the truck or be able to work around the truck. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Truck. Thanks for watching and see you next time.